Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to create a roller coaster in the software No Limits 2 and then I'll show you how to use the Oculus Rift DK2 to ride your roller coasters. So what we're first going to do is set this aside because we don't need it right now. And then when you go to open up No Limits 2, if you have the Oculus plugged in, it will ask you if you want to start the game in VR mode. You want to say no because you can't edit roller coasters if you're in VR mode. So once you're on this screen, you'll click Editor, and that will open up this menu. You want, you, want, you want to go to File, and then New. Then you want to call this something. I'll call mine Example Park. Spelling it terribly because I wasn't paying attention. Then you want to click Yes, so it will load up, and it will create the background. And so once it's done that, you'll be presented with this. This is your buildy space. This is huge. If I go to this perspective mode, you can see that this is a ton of space. So you can build large roller coasters, you can do small ones, it doesn't really matter, whatever you want. So let's go back to top. Now when I build a roller coaster, I like to do a few steps. First, I create the um, background so that I have a nice thing to work with. And then I create the general outline of the track, so I'll create a simple shape. Then I'll change the height of the track so that it will be more like a roller coaster, and then I'll add different sections to it, so like hills with a lift, a chain lift on it, or a station track, and then I'll fine tune it at the end, so it'll be even better roller coaster. So let's start with the terrain. You want to click on this terrain tab up here, and then terrain generator. It'll show you this menu. You want to change some of this, because if you don't, then it'll be like 150 for how high everything can be, that's really tall. So we'll change that to about 50. And then click Generate. It'll show you this, and that's what it will look like. If you don't like that, you can click Generate again, and it'll show you something else. I like that one, so we'll go with that one. Now you can see it's changed it, and there's a lot more lakes and stuff around. And so now I want to find a good place for my roller coaster. I don't want it too near the edge, because you can't go outside of it. So maybe over here, this looks good. I'll have it go around this, uh, the lake. So once you do that, you want to go on Coaster and click New Coaster and then name it something. I'll just name it Test because it's a test. And so once you do that, you'll have a bunch of stuff over here. We don't need to worry about this quite yet. That's for later. So if you click on the Tracks tab, this is where you make your track. So we'll click on start vertex, and then you'll click. This will present a blue dot, and that's your first vertice. So if you want more, you then click over here, and it will create a line in between them, and then you just keep clicking until you have the shape you want. I'll just go around this lake, and then we'll go from there. So don't use too many, but don't use too little either, so um, it's a nice distance, and you can always add more. So I'm back to the beginning, so what I have to do, and it took me a while to learn this because it's kind of weird how you have to do this. So to connect these two, you have to click on Select Modify, and then hold down click to create, create this square, and you want to drag over both the start vertex and the end vertex. This is the end, and that's the beginning. So you want to select both of them, and then it'll become white, and then you want to click up here, Connect, and that will connect the two. Um, so, you can see that this is going slightly under the ground right now, we'll fix that later. So, what you want to do, once you've got this general shape, is start messing around with it. So I think I'll raise this bit up. So if you double click on it, it'll bring up this vertex panel. This, you can change a bunch of settings. I am going to mainly focus on the Y axis because that's up and down and that's what's most important about a roller coaster. You can change it manually, so you don't have to use the numbers, you can just kind of drag it around and it will go wherever, and it'll, if you drag it over here it'll be kind of weird and cross over, so you don't really want to do that. Control Z undoes things in case you do something really bad, you need to undo it, you can just do Control Z. So we're working with this vertice right here. If we change this to be 20 instead of the 5 it is, and then cl click Apply, you'll see that's popped out of the ground because it's now higher. If you go to this top thing and then click Perspective, you can see what well, you've created. WSD to move around, uh, mouse to look up and down and around, and then there you go. So you can see that this is higher now, and then the rest of this is lower. 
because we've just edited this vertice. To go back to the top, we can edit this one, for example. I want to, I think I'll put out a space for the station now so I don't forget about it. So to do that, you want to add a type selector, and you'll click on two places. So I'll click on here, and then I'll click over here. That's created so that section we can edit, and it will only be that section the station, because you don't want the whole thing to be the station, because obviously that wouldn't really work. So if you click Select Modify again, and then click on it, it'll become white. Then you go up here to the section type, click on that, and it'll bring down some options. We want to click on station because that's what we want it to be. But there's also things like lift, transport, brake, and storage. I'm not sure what all of those are because I haven't played with them, but we just want to do station for now. So once you've done that, you can see that there's now the wireframe of a coaster here. And it will be going this way around the loop, I believe. So once you've done that, I think what I'm going to do is raise this one up to about 20, maybe 30. Let's do 30. Okay, there we go. Then we can close that down. And if, I always check perspective a lot so that I can see what I've done. So this is right off the bat going uphill. This might not work terribly well because of the way the coaster is, but it should be fine. Let's just leave it like that. I kind of like that. Uh, go back to the top. So if we go over here a bit, we can lower this one down a bit, I think. So if we ro lower this one to 5, apply, yeah, that's not going below the ground. I just want a nicer uh, hill for this, because I think it was, yeah, that's a nice long hill. And then it kind of goes up a bit. Um, we don't need this vertex panel all this time. What we can do is just kind of come down here and then edit it how we want. So I can lower that one so it's a bit more smooth. And then raise this one up a bit. You know, you can do whatever you want, really. Just as long as it's not crashing through the ground, because that would look silly. So let's lower this one a bit. Oh, not that far. There we go. And then raise this one a bit. There are special things you can do, like loop-de-loops and stuff that are pre-made. To do that, you just go up to advanced, I think? No. Um, elements, actually. So elements, and then special track. Actually, no. Where is it? I know it's here somewhere. Oh, add element. That's where it is. So you can add element, and then you can, like, bring in a loop formula. And this will bring up this screen. And it will basically, you can change the loop however you want. So I'm not going to use this, so I'll just click through here and show you some of the options for it. Then you can mirror it and scale it and do all this kind of thing. Just make it ridiculously huge one if you want. And there it is. And then you can, if it's easier to go to the top to do this, but you can go up here and then select it all just by clicking and dragging and that selected it all and you can move that around and you can fit it in your roller coaster wherever if you don't want something just hit delete on the keyboard and it'll get rid of it when it's selected let's come back over here so once you're happy with the overall shape and where the hills are and stuff you want to add stuff like chain lifts because your roller coaster can't move unless you have chain lifts unless you have something creative at the beginning where it's going downhill or whatever, but usually you need a chain lift. So to do that, you do the same thing as the station. You go to track, and add type selector, and then click on where you want it. So right now, I can just click on this bit, and that bit will be selected. So I'll change that to a lift. So now that that's a lift, the train comes out of the station right onto there. And then once it gets to the top of the hill, then the lift stops, and it can go around, and hopefully it'll make it. It should. In the type settings, you can change everything about that lift section. So when it's still clicked on, you can change the type. So you can change it to either a chain or friction wheels. I think the friction wheels would be fun. And you can change where the motor is and the speed of it. We can raise that to like 20, and then click OK, and now that's edited a bit, so it's changed a bit. And now that's a different chain. It's a bit faster and it's a different type. So now, when your coaster comes to the end, it might be going a bit fast, and the station does have brakes, but it doesn't always stop it completely. So what we want to do is do the same thing, add a type selector, and then select it, and then we want to go to here again and select brake. Braking has a lot of different type settings as well, so you can have it come to a complete stop in that braking section and you can have a speed limit on it, like how fast it can go through, and all of this. 
you can play around with this as you want. It's not incredibly important. As long as your coaster stops, it's fine. So click OK. Now this is looking pretty good. It's a pretty simple but pretty nice roller coaster. So what we want to do next is bank things. Now for this roller coaster it won't matter as much, and it's kind of auto-banked already. You can see that's not perfectly flat. But sometimes you want to bank it just a little bit more, so I'll show you how to do that. So what you want to do, like here, this is a good example. It's, see how it's bowed out that way? We want it to go curved in so you don't get flung out of the roller coaster because that would be bad. So what you want to do is click on Add Roll and then click where you want it, so there. And you can see that flattened out because the default is at zero degrees. So if I click Select Modify and then double click on it, then you can change how many degrees it's at. Negative 45 can go that way and then 45 can go that way and it's flattened back out again. Or you can use smaller increments so I can make it 10. That looks pretty good. So now that's at 20 and it's coming up here. Uh, this could do with a little bit, so I'll click on Add Roll again and then click on it here. And then if I uh, do this, I can edit it a bit more. And there we go, that's looking pretty good. Maybe one right here for our last one. Okay, that looks good. Uh, one here as well. There we go. Now once you've done that, it's pretty much done. and you can see it's still a wireframe right now, and the way you change that is you need to freeze it. So if you come over to the Coaster tab again, and then click this Freeze button, it will freeze it. So it'll load, and it'll create the buildings and supports, and there you go. So this is my coaster. It has the station, it auto-generates that, and then it will go up, and then it'll go down, and it's the same coaster. It's just actually a coaster now, which is nice. And right now it's just completely white and it has no supports and it's just nothing really. It's just the just the track. But you can change this. If we unfreeze it, then it'll go back to this. And if we go to Coaster Properties, this is where you can select a whole different bunch of things. So in Style, this is all the different types of coasters you have. So if you don't like this simple one that it starts off with, you can set it to be like a Hyper Coaster or a Mac Launch Coaster, whatever that is. That looks pretty cool. I'll keep it at that. So now if you go to mode, that's just some different things, and then trains, you can change how many trains there are and how many uh, cars per train there are. I'll change that to eight because we have a longer station, so it could do it. Um, colors, this you can click on one of the things and it brings up this whole color slider thing and it's amazing. So let's make a nice blue coaster to go with the water. So if you just change all of these to like a different color blue, it should look pretty nice. Once we do this, you can change the car colors as well. This is very detailed. Very detailed. You can do so many things with this, and I have. And I'll show you some at the end that I've pre-made that are pretty cool, I think. And then change the bogey to, like, maybe that color. Okay. Now if we click OK. That's now changed everything the way we want it to be. You can see the track's a bit different because it's a different type of coaster. So if we freeze it again just to see what it looks like. It does take a bit sometimes. It's not always that quick. Especially when it's trying to create something that it hasn't before. Almost there. I think it's struggling to... Oh, there it goes. So now it's like a nice purple and blue. and You can see this train's a bit different than the other one. It looks a lot faster. So now you might be wondering, how's this staying up? Well, because it's a game, first of all. But if you want to make it look like it has supports and stuff, there is a way to do that. So if we unfreeze it again, and then go to the Supports tab at the top, we can sub, uh, add a prefab. So if we click Choose Prefab, there's a whole bunch of different ones that we can choose from. These are... I'm not sure which one's proper, and I just use whatever looks best, but I'm sure there's the right ones for right coasters and stuff. But I'll just select... Uh, this one looks good, a giga single one. I think this is just a single pull. So the way this works is you click on the track where you want the thing, where you want the uh, support. And it will show you a brown line with then a gray thing at the bottom. It's sometimes easier to do this from the top. Let's do that. So just click it where you think you need it. And you can always delete these, of course. So I'll just click them at random intervals, really so that it looks good. Maybe a couple above the water. That looks pretty good. One around here. Some of these are pretty short and you might decide to get rid of them because they just don't make much sense because they're too close to the terrain or something. 
but for now I'm just clicking around. There we go, that's all the way around. If we go back to perspective, we can see, okay, they're all in place. Those two are a bit low, but it doesn't matter. That looks good. So now we want to freeze it again. Coaster freeze. And then we'll be able to see what the supports look like. So there we go. They're white. That looks good with the, the uh, blue track. So now it's pretty much done. You have your coaster, and you have your track, and you have your supports, and it's pretty cool. So now you want to try it. So if you go to File again, and then Leave Editor, Editor. it's also Alt-X if you want, and then click Save, because that would be bad if you accidentally click this X, because then it unloads it. So if you click Play now, you can play your coaster and see if it works. So I can look around. It looks pretty good. Also, if you're waiting to get up a big hill like this, you can also speed up the sim speed by pressing the plus and minus keys on the numpad. That's pretty nice. And then we're going around here, and around here. Oh, that's banked way too far, I think, but it's pretty good, I think. It's not too bad. Ooh, it's getting a bit slow. See, if you get completely stuck, you can just change it a bit. Maybe add a chain somewhere, but this is pretty good. And then back to the station. So it's not the most exciting coaster. Oh, I might need to fix that as well. It seems to be stuck. So if you click Exit and then click Editor again, you can just go back to editing it. So we'll go over here and fix these bricks because they're really not needed. I might need to make that taller as well over there. So if I click Unfreeze, then I can deselect this by, oops, not that one. Uh, selection type, I can just change that back to track so that it's no longer a break because it doesn't really need it. I'll also make this over here a bit taller because it didn't quite give it enough speed. So if I raise that a bit like that, oh that should be good. That looks, that looks pretty good now. So now this should work fairly well. Oh and I'll change this bank over here because it was too much. So it's a lot of fiddling around and seeing what works and what doesn't, but you'll get used to it. It took me a few hours to fully understand everything about it. But it is fun. So freeze this again. And then it is frozen. Okay, that looks good. And then file exit. Uh, yes. And then play. Let's see if this works better. Ooh, I need to bank this a bit more. You can see that me changing that has changed how this is banked. Which is okay. It's just a, to show you how to do things. So now that you have your roller coaster built and it's up and running, you need to save it and then close out of No Limits 2. And then what you're going to do is plug in the Oculus Rift. And once you do that, you open up No Limits 2 again. And when it brings up the window saying, it, do you want to start in VR mode, you want to click yes this time. What should happen is you'll see what's on the screen right now, the two images. And in the headset, you should see that image as well. So if I check, yep, it's there. So now you want to put on the Oculus Rift. So take off the headphones. And put the Oculus on. And the headphones go back on. Now, when you see this, you want to click Play. And then it'll bring up this screen that has a bunch of different roller coasters that are pre-made. But to ride the one you uh, made, you want to click home, and then find it, whatever you called it, you'll see it, and then once it loads up, in a second, it, <clears throat> you'll be able to see it, and it should all be good. If this doesn't work, you might have uh, to need to install something Oculus-wise, like a runtime or something like that, but right now it's working, and you can see if I look around, it's all, it, for me, in 3D. For you, it's just still on the flat screen. But you can see me look around. It's quite cool. So, my roller coaster is quite short. And yours might be longer, depending on how you made it. But this is a nice little one just to give you a taste of what it's like to ride it on the Oculus. So that's one, that one. If you hit Escape then it'll take you to this menu. You want to click this X to close that park. 
we're going to click play and go up a level to show you one of my other parts. So if I go to this one, this is one I created a while ago uh, for school, and it's I think I created this one with the demo, which in the demo you can only have up to 10 vertices, um, but it's still quite an impressive roller coaster for only having 10 to work with. Now, as it loads, there we go, almost there. Okay, so this is one of the first ones I made, and your head kind of clips through the railing. But you can see, this is what I've created with the demo. This is quite a fast one at first, and then it goes up the hill slightly. For the trees and stuff, you can do those, and you, there's a lot of different options. I chose pine trees, but you have to place them all individually. So you select them in the uh, one of the tabs at the top of the editor. I think they're in uh, terrain or something like that. But then you place them all down individually. I haven't found a tool where you can just place down several at a time. Which just adds a bit more to the park, makes it look a bit cooler. What's kind of cool is, with the positional tracking, you can kind of look over it, and you can look down off your roller coaster. So you can see how high it is right here. It's kind of like a bridge, like a trestle. This is all quite cool. If you're... you might have to turn down some graphic settings if your computer can't run it smoothly because with VR in general you want to have a higher frame rate so that it's not juddering because that can create uh, just a weird effect that doesn't really leave your eyes feeling that well but <clears throat> so you might need to turn some settings down just to get that frame rate higher than what it might be right now I have everything on high and it's working pretty well so this one's almost done. You can see it goes over there and back into the station. This one took me probably quite a while because I didn't know the software very well. So it probably took just above an hour to fully create. And I think it turned out rather well for what it is. So you can look down. Up here the frame rate's a bit laggy. It, I don't know what's doing that, but some it's not usually that bad. And you probably won't even see that on the recording. So now we're back in the station. That slowed it right down. I should probably change that so that it just coasts in instead of completely stopping. So if we go out, click the X again, and click play, you can go up to the folder, and this is one I created a few days ago, I think. This one took me about half an hour to create, and it turned out rather well, in my opinion. So wait for it to start up. This one, the, uh, the supports aren't showing up for some reason, and I'm not sure what's doing that, but normally it would just be like a wooden structure, and there's a tool that you can use that automatically generates that structure. So this one goes up, and it kind of loops around a bit. It would look better with the supports, but they're just not showing up for some reason. When you're wearing the Oculus, you can really tell just how smooth your coaster is. Because on a normal 2D screen, sometimes you can't really tell, but when you're in it, like you are with the Oculus, you can really see if it's smooth or not. I think I have one more to show you. Um... This one maybe? I can't quite remember where I put it. Sometimes it does take a while to load just because if it's a big park or not. Kind of depends. Oh, yeah, this one. This one I put a lot of trees around just to kind of hide it. Oh, and I was working on something else over there that's not built. I think it's still in the wireframe mode over there. But this one, it kind of goes up, and then it does a loop, and then it goes under the loop, and then it loops back around through it. So, this one might make me feel a bit ill. Hopefully not. You can look around. 
this one is a bit juddery just because I think the trees are making the game run a bit slower because I have the foliage uh, settings up pretty high and I think that's kind of not helping things. So this one goes around and back down and around here. That took me a while to get pretty smooth like that because when you're looking from the top down view it kind of shows everything kind of all jumbled up. So that's it for that. So those are all the ones that I've made so far. If you want, you can go to the library and try out any of these other ones. But I think that's all I have for you today. So thanks for watching the video. If this helped, that's great. Um, hopefully you can create some amazing things with it. It's a great software called No Limits 2. And uh, I'll see you later.